Hi, I'm Dave Roberts and this is Angling Escapades. Good morning and welcome to the River Wye in Hereford. You're here with Angling Escapades and we're on the Belmont section once again. And um, today's film is all about one thing and that's bread. All I've got with me is bread, bread and more bread. Okay, I haven't got a maggot, I haven't got a caster, I haven't got any worms. Literally, it's bread or bust today. Um, the reason I do that is bread is, is a method that's been so successful for me over the years on this river. It's seen me catch uh, weights of over 100 pounds uh, of chub, uh, fishing bread flake on float tactics. And it's, it's probably the most positive method that I fish on this river, certainly float fishing anyway. Um, so I'm gonna take you through the things that I do uh, to make this a successful method for me. Um, and most importantly, uh, is your preparation of your bait, how you're gonna feed it. Uh, it's got to be done in a certain way, otherwise it's, it's ineffective. So I'm going to take you through those processes. It's always the first thing I do when I get to the bank so that it's right for when I start. So I'll take you through those processes now. Okay, so a little bit of history on bread fishing on this river. When I was a kid, um, bread was a big bait for uh, catching, you know, big bags of chub. And, and when I say big, I'm talking bigger chub, you know, they catch sort of, you know, 30, 40 pounds of big units, usually on the out of town stretches. Um, and it was all very crude, the way they'd fish. They'd fish with, uh, you know, six pound maxima, big 12 swan, uh, chub afloat, big bolts afloat and size hicks hooks and um, you know and that just sort of indicates how bold you can be with bread but over the years and certainly through my my fishing career I feel like I've helped towards develop it as well towards um, making it a very much uh, you know a, a, a method that can catch your smaller chub as well and put big weights and I say we've had weights in excess of 100 pounds here um, fishing bread and 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 those those have come from fish you know between anywhere from sort of like five ounces up to two pounds um, so it's a very busy method as well so um, you know it's sort of evolved over the years and um, a big part of that really has been feeding um, so I mean basics for bread for me first of all the best bread you can buy for hook bait uh, on the market barn on is Warburton's medium slice um, I know there's, lo there's lots of other, I've used lots of other breads as well for different applications, but for this style of fishing that I'm going to do today, I've found nothing better. It's just got the right amount, it's got a little doughiness to it, you don't have to squeeze it on the hook hard, you can literally fold it over a, a decent size hook and it just stays on and it comes off when you strike, it's just perfect for me. Um, for me there's nothing better. Don't, don't make the, the mistake of buying the toasty because it's too thick then. Warburton's medium size for me is the best. Now. Feeding wise, I liquidise some bread, but I don't liquidise this stuff. This doesn't liquidise the same for me. Um, I actually, to liquidise, I buy the real cheap stuff, the stuff on the bottom shelf, 35p a loaf, because it's generally got less doughiness to it. It's generally a bit sort of crumblier and it liquidises better. Um, and you know, this is for your feed, so it's kind of, it, it kind of fits that mould better. Um, so that's a whole loaf that I've liquidised there. Um, now, if I was fishing for roach or whatever, you know, on many other applications, you think about bread punch fishing on canals and things like that, um, then you'd be taking the crusts off and you'd been doing it very fine. This is the river Y. You're lucky if we take it out of the bag. Um, it's just, you know, I, I, I liquidise everything, the crusts and all. I, I do put it, I'll put it for a riddle before I put it into my mix. But ultimately, um, I want all those bits. I want them to sort of be floating off and, and creating excitement and drawing fish. It's got such drawing power. This is real potent stuff, um, you know, and it's uh, it just, as long as it's used correctly, it's fine. But I, for on the Y, very much, very aggressive, you know, roughly uh, liquidized, and there you go. So the key is, is how you feed that. Um, now, there's a number of ways you can do it and I've seen different ways over the years and I use different ways and sometimes it changes for where I am if I'm on shallower water deeper water you know so it's, but the way I like to do it on this stretch is um, I like to put it in with ground bait so it's quite simple I don't need any special mixes I don't need anything fancy Some pigeons just come to say hello I think the pigeon has got his eye on my bread my little fella there 
that there's a bit of my bread. So the way I like to feed my bread, I like to take a bag of my normal ground bait, this pro natural that I use. This is the mix I'd use, you know, on uh, for fishing for dace and what have you and that, you know, balling in. Um, but ultimately you can use what you want. Use brown crumb, it all has the effect. This is just gonna act as a carrier. It's just because that's my favorite mix and it adds flavor. And also this mix can double up as a as a, as a dace and roach mix as well if, it's, uh, if you add casters and hemp to it and things like that. So I just take a bag of this, And I'm going to mix this, but I'm going to mix this very haphazardly. I'm not going to, I'm not worried about the, the consistency. What I want is actually almost to ruin this. I want to overwet this. So I'll put a glug, glug of water in to start with. Give it a mix. Okay, and then give it a bit more. It's almost gone to like a sloppy mess, you know. It's not, you know, it's if, if you're mixing it to do, you know, to do a different job, it would probably you'd have gone too far. But for this, what I'm going to do now is leave that five minutes, let it absorb the water, and then see where we end up. But I generally want to, I want to overwet this because obviously liquidized bread uh, or bread in general has got obviously high absorption so that's going to if i put that into a mix it's going to dry it out so it's quite deliberate to make it wetter to start with before we add this so we'll give that five minutes and come back to it so there we go we've given that five minutes you can see now that's quite a you know it's, it's it would, as a grain bit on its own it would be no good in that state it's real clumpy and claggy and horrible but this is where the magic happens so as you can see, I've got my liquidized bread. I say this is a whole loaf liquidized in here, and I won't need all this. This is such potent stuff that, you know, this will last me two or three sessions. And what I'm gonna do, because obviously I only liquidized it very coarsely, so I'm gonna put it through a riddle to get all the big lumps out, because ultimately what's, you know, we've left the crusts in, which is fine, it's what I want. Crusts do a, a brilliant job in a ground bread, the way they fizz off and float off. But obviously I don't want pieces of crust that size because otherwise I'm gonna end up with every seagull in the land in front of me. So I'm just gonna knock those off there. And I'm gonna put a bit more in. Okay, same again. And the reason I do this early, as soon as I get to the peg is because obviously there are bits of, you know, I have got bits of crusts and what have you in there and, and obviously they will, you know, they naturally float so if I get it into the mix early and give it an hour or so before I start then it will just soak some of those down and stop them flying off so quickly and stop them floating up so now I'm going to mix that into my mix and you can see it's completely changed the makeup of the mix now we've got a nice mix that's got that squeezes up into balls nicely and every ball has got loads of little particles of bread in it all those little bits of liquidized and, and crust and everything's in there and the key with that is that that's going to sink down to the bottom uh, you know they're quite claggy balls so it's going to go to the bottom but the air, you know, because of that, the consistency of bread and those crusts and that, you know, that's n there's naturally air in that mix and it's going to break down. That's going to sit on the bottom and that's going to send those little bits and pieces off flying. And what that does, you know, they draw off the bottom. And what it does is it gets, I find it gets the chub off the bottom and real excited. So you can fish with bread, you can fish it, you know, uh, you can fish it off bottom. Uh, you know, generally I find about a foot off bottom is usually right, but I've had it, I've had them as shallow as like four feet and things like that. You know, they do, you know, it depends on the day, it depends on the weather, but um, I find with that mix there, you know, some of it, it's gonna hit the bottom, but then it's releasing and it's creating that trail. It's gonna draw fish in and hopefully, I would hope to catch right over the ground bait eventually. But um, for me, that's a bread mix. As I say, if I was, you know, if I was expecting a bit of everything, you know, some dace and roach as well, then I might add casters to it, I might add hemp to it as well. The bread won't do any harm, it won't put those species off. But for me, today, we're just about bread. So, like I say, feed, you feed the cheap stuff, 
fish the expensive stuff on the hook. Job done. Now, all I need to do now is set up some rigs to actually fish this method with. So I'll take you through, I'll get set up and I'll take you through my rigs. Okay, so that's our rigs all set up. Um, rigs for this game, generally, just a whole lot more positive. Um, you know, bread's a big positive bait and as such, you know, my rigs are bigger. Generally, I don't fish, you know, it's only top and bottom floats, bolo floats. And a general rule of thumb is you can go two grams heavier on your rig if you know compared to if i was fishing you know maggots and casters for roach and dace um if i was going to fish a six gram bolo for that if i was fishing bread i'd fish eight and likewise if i was going to fish eight i'd set ten and that's what i've set up today eight and ten um the reason for that there's a couple of reasons for that one is um bread's obviously a bigger bait and casting that you know puts more there's more resistance as it goes through the air and a bigger float just helps get it out there get it settled cuts down tangles you don't want to be pushing this you don't want to be whipping it out there you just want to be able to swing it out get it in place and get it fishing the other reason is is that it's just such a positive bait and these fish they won't be finicky they won't be little dips it's not like fish sometimes fishing for roach with casters and maggots and things like that you know it's a big bait bread is and they're going to nail it so you know you can get away with fishing a bigger bigger bait and holding it in place and actually nailing it over your ground bait so they come and take it and actually drag that float under so rig stuff set up today are I've got an eight gram bolo set up and this will be my my running rig really um what i'm looking to do with this is just to cast it out there get it running through with my bait over my bait and i've got this is a, a dh number three bolo and the reason i like these floats this sort of fishing is the size of the bristle on the float it's a big thick bristle um, really stands out uh, takes the weight of the bread because obviously bread's quite a heavy bait once it takes on water so it doesn't sink under uh, and i say a nice visible visible hollow tip that I can see in all conditions. Nice round body with a shoulder on it that I can hold, hold back, back against if I need, if I need to. to. And then coming, and then coming down, down, obviously I've got my, I've got, my, I've got an, an olivette, just a big olivette, and then two, and then two number, number eight, eight droppers, droppers together, together on, the on the line. Very simple, you know, real simple fishing. No need for fancy, fancy shotting patterns in this game. Um, just nice and bold. And I've got on there, I've got a size 11 Kamasan B711 hook. It's quite a big hook. Um, Perhaps not as big as you would use for, for bread sometimes, you know, I've used eight, sixes, fours for bread fishing, you know, if, if sometimes on the wilder when I'm fishing for bigger chub, I'll, I'll fish a bigger uh, hook, but in this instance, because I like sometimes to switch over to a bunch of maggots if I've got them with me, um, etc, things like that, size 11 is a nice in-between size, I can fold a nice, decent sized piece of flake over that, but likewise I can put three maggots on it and get bites off that, so it's a real versatile hook for me. So that's the setup, and that I say, eight grams, that's for me is gonna run through. There's still quite a bit of pace on the water, so I'm not gonna be able to slow that one up too much. Um, that's gonna be pretty much casting that out and run it through, and that'll be the rig I'd probably start on. Then, as invariably can happen, the river can, you know, pace up. We can get a bad, at the moment it's nice and calm, but we get a bad downstream wind. So what I've got set up, exactly the same float, but in 10 grams. This is a 10 gram float, um, and I've got this set up on a longer bolo rod. This is a six meter bolo rod. And this is this one's all about control. So it's a nice, you know, a bit of a bigger float, bigger shoulder, and uh, you know, a bigger bulk down, which I can hold back against. And I could even overshot that and really hold it in place. But like I say, if the wind gets up, just one big number four dropper. And if the wind gets up, or you know, the pace is too much, I can slow it right down with that. And again, same again, size 11 hook, gonna fish exactly the same way. It's almost two identical rigs, just slightly, uh, slightly different sized floats. And I think those two floats should give me the control I need. I say it's quite bold fishing. I've got 0.18, four pound main line. I've got a 013 hook length. You know, it's not, you know, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not about finessing this, this job. It's just about, you know, something that's gonna present that bread so as you'll get some bites. And finally, now I've set up a little bit of a, well, I don't know really. I've never done this on the river, so you're basically going to come on this uh, this exploratory experience with me. I've set up a stick float. Now, I've not got any maggots with me or anything. This is one of the best roach pegs on the river. Um, and I just thought, well, well, I've got the bread here. I might as well, um, you know, trickle a little bit in and see if we can catch some roach on bread. So I've got proper uh, conventional bread punch somewhere here. Got my bread punch with me. And um, maybe we'll have a go at that, see if we can catch a few roach later. But my main concern to start with is... Uh, is the chub, you know, catching some chub on uh, on the big bolo floats. But I've got a nice strung out stick float there. I think this one's 11 number six, same as we used for, for the roach feature a few weeks ago. Just a nice, 
tapered strung out rig and a nice bulbous stick float there lever number six you never know we might catch some roach on bread as well but i've never done it before so it's as it's as much of an unknown to me as it is to you so that's for later what i'm going to do now is get myself ready to start get some bait in and hopefully start getting some bites okay so i'm all ready to go now rigs are ready baits ready so what i'm going to do i'm going to kick off this session i'm going to fit i've got um i've got seven little sausages of ground bait like that okay mix up and i'm going to fire these in with a catapult if you're a good thrower you throw these in if you're me you throw put them in the catapult but what I like to I like to use a cat pot as well because it gets me into a bit of a routine and regular. You're not going to be you're not going to be feeding this every cast. Every other cast usually I find because you know bread's a potent bait. So I'm going to put these in. I'm going to fire these out and I want them to land you know downstream of me so that when I cast my rig out, the bread settles, the rig's in place, and then it's fishing over top of where my ground bait is and the trail from that ground bait. I don't want it too high up the peg. If it's too high up here, then I'm going to go past the fish. So it's important not to go too, you know, you can always come back up if you need to adjust it accordingly, but ultimately I don't want to go too far upstream to start with. So I'm just going to flick these out on a line, probably just over a third out. will sink down and start releasing all those bits of crust and bits of bread out and this is just to create that initial trail of bait out in the flow and I probably won't feed again until probably won't feed again until I have my first fish or you hope let them settle over it and I say you could be put in you could be putting casters and hemp and God knows what in here, but uh, today's all about bread. So there you go, that's seven balls gone in there. Those will be sinking to the bottom, starting to break up, getting lots of bits floating off downstream and hopefully attracting those fish into our swim. So I'm gonna start on my eight gram rig. Now I haven't plumbed up today. I don't generally plumb up with this. I've got a good idea of what depth it is out there, but what I'm gonna do generally with this, I just find the depth that, that they're happy feeding at. So all I'm gonna do is just take my little bit of crust like that a little bit of flake like that and just fold it around the top the spade of the hook and just pinch it there so it's only just pinched at the top there the rest of it's all floaty and lovely there we go so that's gonna sink down and i say i don't feed anything at this stage i've already put that initial bombardment in or not bombardment i've put in the initial feed in i'm just gonna let this sink down it's nice at the moment because there's no there's no wind as such, so I'm just gonna just get behind the float and just let it run really. You know, the river's still quite big really, so I'm, you know, there is gonna be a certain amount of having to let it go at a certain pace, you know, you're not gonna hold it dead still. But generally sometimes that's, I find that's best with, especially with chub, just let them, let them see the bait, let them follow it and let them nail it. And all I'll do is, if I'm not, you know, I'm not dragging bottom at the moment, so I'll just have a couple of runs through at a certain depth. Bring that back now, that's gone far enough. I'll have a couple of runs through at a certain depth and then readjust, put a bit more depth on until I've sort of fine bites, really. So, same again. So it's not massive pieces of bread, it's just... You know that's a good size you know that's a good size bait whatever fish you are you know i've used a lot bigger at different times but generally that's about the right size as i say at this stage i don't want to feed anything else yet i want to gauge get some fish in front of me and then gauge where they're at and how they're reacting to the feed so that's the sort of spot where i'd expect to be catching if they come over the feed it's just running through there nice now It actually goes through there nicely it's not you know it's not tanking through is it i looked at the river yesterday and it was quite uh, quite pacing i was a bit worried it might be a bit big but let's try slowing that up as it gets towards the end of the, the peg that run.
That's our first bite. Feels like a chub. I think I just had a bite the, the cars before, you know, it's been I've just gone down, put that extra foot on and it's just started tripping tripping bottom a little bit. Definitely getting some signs. Up. There we go. That's what we were looking for. And that's just for me, that's just the perfect bread size on this river. You know, these are the ones you do a weight of. That's over a pound, you know, and it's gonna if you can get those lined up, you're gonna do a real decent weight. They just love bread, you know. I mean a nice big bait, they're such aggressive creatures. And uh that's what uh, I'd expect to catch on the bread. So that's the first. That's taken about, that's not taken probably 10 runs through, I'd say, for our first bite. So I'll be honest, I wouldn't expect the next bite to be too far away. Usually, once they find it, and what I'll do now is I'll feed it again now. Now I know they've found the bait.
So I'm going to switch to this 10 gram rig and hopefully this might just hold it a bit steadier over the ground bait and see if we can nail the fish. I'm sure they're there. Well, I know they're there. I'm just sure they're feeding a lot more confidently than my bites are suggesting. So hopefully this will turn it around a little bit. So same, same process. Keep feeding. So now, I'm going to hold on to it a bit more now as it goes into that area of ground. Right? I'm just going to let it run a little bit and then hold it back. And then just ease it through that area. Ooh, a little dip on the float then. No, nothing. I'm sure I had a little dip then. Bigger bite for that first cast on the bigger rig. Right, that was down the peg a bit, but I think I had a dip right over the ground bait originally. It's small fishes. But as so often is the case, a change of rig has brought a bite. I do feel straight away that this is going to be the rig to fish. I mean, I could carry on on the 8 grammer. It's a small chubble at that time. I could carry on on the 8 grammer and probably carry on getting odd bites and odd fish. But I think this is definitely going to be the way forward. So, same again. Nice, gentle swing out. Catapult. Little sausage of grain bait. Flick it out there. Mend your line. Get behind your float. And we're back up and running. So this time I'm really going to just ease it into that area. There's a bite straight away. Then that was right on top of the grain bait. Feels like better fish as well. So there you go, it just goes to show, doesn't it? They're there. And the only thing that was wrong was the presentation. Just being able to slow that bait up enough for them to get hold of it. Yeah, nice chub that one. nice that's the size you want to be catching Look at that. there we go look at that that's a classic breadfish that is he's got plenty of plenty of grain bait and stuff inside it so as a fish that's sitting right on the grain bait would suggest So then, now I feel like I've got to where I should be. And the fact that I know this fish sat over my ground bait, and I know my rig's now effective and heavy enough to nail, nail it right over top of her. So same again, mend the line and then just ease it. And I'm just holding that back and just let it go a little bit and then Straight away, look at that, lovely. Oh, it came off. Ooh. It's such a control, you, you, you get such a control with this sort of grain bait, you know, you, they're really homing in on it. And you can, you know, you can fish this at long distance. I'm fishing, you know, just, uh, just under midway today but I could fish this right over because you can fire a ball of grain but as far as you want and uh, this is just uh, it's such a, a controlled way of fishing but also such a positive way so again just into the hot spot as I'd call it easy it through there's a bike straight away look at that that was big that one It's 
still, you know, fish you like to catch. Soon build the weight up and they pull a bit as well. Dip then. Now that's gone past the zone this time, but we'll let it keep letting it run. Oh, bite at the end of the pack then. Oh, that's lovely that is. Just when you just you just holding it back through the through the area, and then you just let it go, and it literally just keeps going on under. Fish has obviously just been either just been holding on to the bait or just watching it, and it's just as it's started to drop, it's just taking it.
Well, I think this will just about be my last ball of ground, but I've just about run out of bait. It's been uh, had a lot more than normal today, but that's purely down to the size of the river. You know, the river's bigger than, than it normally is when I fish bread. You know, it's usually a bit lower and clearer, and you just don't have, generally have to feed so much. But today it's been a case to keep the fish coming. It's been a case of feeding virtually a ball every cast, but it's been absolutely epic. I've not, um, I was a bit worried early on when I was on that lighter rig. I thought, have I made a mistake here? Is this the wrong day to be doing this? But um, once I found the, once I picked this rig up, I'm, I haven't put it down. You know, it's just been the right rig. And uh, isn't that fishing? Isn't that river fishing? You know, you just, it's all about presentation and getting it right on the day. And um, all it took was another extra two grams of weight and it's been fished like that all day. I'm getting brave now. I'm swinging these fish in. I could quite easily net them, but uh, it's um, this is this is this is chub fishing, bread fishing for chub. This is it, you know, in a nutshell for me. This is exactly how I like it. You know, you can control where the fish are in the peg the, with the way you feed it. You know, it's not a huge bait, but it's a big bait. You know, it's uh, and there's only going to be if it goes under. You know it's something decent pulling it under and it's just such a positive way of fishing and I, I just love it, I can't get enough of it. Miss that right. So I think we'll have one more run down and then we better have a look on this stick float, don't we? I've been promising to do it all day. I haven't had a go. I've run out of grain bait, so I've actually been putting I've just put a couple of balls of of the liquid eyes down there, so I don't know whether it'll work or not, but it's gotta be worth a go. It's been such a good day, let's see if we can round it off in spectacular fashion. I haven't even got enough to feed now, so we'll just rely on what's there already. But it's been the same, once you get into a rhythm with this, you know, fishing big floats is easy, you just drop it into the same spot every time, feed, let it run, set it up, get it running, slow it to, at the point where you think they are, and there you go. It's as easy as that. Decent stamp as well. I'm going to put the net under this one because this will be the last fish I have on this bread today. And these are the fish that I, you know, I love catching on bread. They're just, you know, they're big enough to really, once you start putting those together, you'll, you'll soon have a weight in your net. And I, I, I have no idea how many are out there, but uh, there's quite a few. Lovely. It's perfect bread fish. Okay, so bolo and bread done. Now, can we catch a roach on the stick float to finish off? So I'll just I'll put one put a couple down there before. I mean this is you know this is liquidized bread so it's it doesn't sink very quick. So that should just Get a little trail of bread going down through there, and I'm going to fish it. I'm going to. I've got a you know a traditional, a proper traditional bread punch, like so. So I'm going to put that into me box, flatten the bread down, I shan't be fishing a small punch, that's for sure. So stick float. No. I haven't plumb this up properly, but I know it's not that deep down this inside. I want it to go tight in. Because I know that's where these roach will be. 
And the colour does look good for roach, in all fairness. I wouldn't be surprised if we catch one. So, like I say, I've never done this before, so... You're joining me on this journey of explore, exploration. So there we go, just a little normal bread punch. Just going to drop it off the rod tip. I'm not going to put any more bait in yet because I mean that bread can be quite, quite filling. So I'm just going to run it down the inside here. Oh, I don't know, is that bite? I think it was just dragging under. Let's just go a little bit further out. There we go, that's trundling off down through there nicely now. Oh. Whether that's dragged under or is a bite. It went under. Same again. It's going to take a bit of depth off there. That looked like a bite. Yes, we have a fish. <laughs> now, what is it? Could be a roach. Oh, I don't know. Oh, it is a roach. Well, look at that. Lovely little red fin. Well, now, that is my first ever fish on the Y on bread punch. I wouldn't say on bread because I've caught them on bread before. But on actual bread punch in the most traditional of ways, I'm never fish bread punching. That is a lively little roach. And it's my first fish, so there we go. Roach on bread punch on the Y. Now, I don't think it's going to become the method. I don't think you'll find me carrying it to every match from now on, but... It's food for thought, it makes you think, you know, the days when you know when it's cold and clear and they're a bit finicky. Would they prefer a bit of bread? Now I'll just put the tiniest little nugget of liquid eyes down now. I don't want to over put too much in. Down there. Yeah. 
Nein? Probably the smallest fish of the day. But you know what, I, I'm quite happy to end on that. Nice little little roach on the punch. Who'd have thought it, eh? There we go. So, there we go. Hope you've enjoyed that. Um, bit of fun at the end there. Like I say, bread punch on the stick float. I've never done it on this river before, but uh, first time for everything. But uh, And I think I'd come back again and try it, you know, try a different way, try and be a bit more refined with it and and uh, there's definitely something in it and, and it'd be nice i just hope we'd have caught a big fish there but such is life um but the main aim of today was to fish that bread and show you how to cut the chub on that bread and uh that's what we've done that was absolutely brilliant exactly how i'd want it so i was a bit worried the conditions might be a bit high but it's it's worked out perfectly so um there hopefully will be a part two to this video at some point i want to go out of town and, and show you how i fish bread for the bigger fish the more wilder fish because it's a slightly different approach um, so hopefully there'll be a part two but for now I hope you've enjoyed this one um, keep subscribing keep all your positive comments coming and uh, we'll see you next time